Do you only have a gas barbecue at home, but you still wanna get some nice smoky flavor in your meat? Then stick around because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to smoke meat on a gas barbecue. All right, so we've turned our gas on and we're gonna turn this very left burner on only. And now that burner's on, we can shut our lid. Then we'll give it a few minutes and we wanna get up to around that 250 Fahrenheit or 120 Celsius range. So obviously every barbecue is gonna be different. You will need a hooded barbecue. This is a six burner matador barbecue. I've had it for about 10 years. So just adjust your temperatures accordingly. You might need one burner on, you might need two burners on, you might need it on high, you might need it on medium. So play around and get to that temperature that we spoke about before around that 250 Fahrenheit or 120 Celsius. So while our barbecue is preheating, we'll get our meat ready. All right, so we're gonna be reverse searing this beautiful two inch thick T-bone. And yes, in Australia, we do call it a T-bone. So this really doesn't need much trimming, so we're gonna go ahead and get it seasoned up. We're gonna be using a combination of our garlic goals and some Heavenly Hell, the grilled, the smoked, and the lovely. But honestly, if you wanna just use salt and pepper, that's gonna work perfect as well. So we'll give it a base coat in our garlic goals. And we've just topped it off with that Heavenly Hell, the grilled, the smoked, and the lovely. So our barbecue should almost be ready. I'll show you what we'll do next. Right, so now what you wanna do is get some foil ready and then either some wood chips, some pellets, some wood dust, but we're gonna be using these beans from Natural Smoke. Same sort of thing, you just want something small enough that's gonna smoke away nicely throughout this cook. Now you can get smoke tubes and smoke boxes, which are great accessories if you do smoke on a gas barbecue, but we're gonna be keeping it super basic and using some foil today. So I'll show you what we'll do next. So we're just gonna double our foil over, place our little beans inside, we'll double it over again to create a pocket, fold these edges around, and we'll stab some holes in there, and we'll take it over to our barbecue. So our temperature's right where we want it to be at, so we'll open our lid. So what we've also done here, and I'll show you what you need to do. So if you've got one on there, you'll have to take it off like we've done here. So I've taken the deflector plate off this one. So we've got some direct flame. Obviously you can see that's what it should look like. And you need that direct flame. So whatever you're using inside your foil or your smoking tube will catch light and smolder away. So we'll get that on, give it a couple of minutes to start smoking away, and then we can get our steak on. Right, so it's been about five minutes, starting to get some smoke come out of our little foil pack. So we'll get this steak on. And we'll get it over the opposite side of the barbecue. And you wanna use a cake rack just so your steak isn't sitting flat on the hot plate here, and that smoke will penetrate through both sides of the steak. So when we shut our lid, that smoke will fill up our barbecue nicely and give our steak that beautiful smoky flavor. So let's shut our lid and let this steak cook away. All right, so now our steak's on, you don't wanna be seeing any thick, heavy white smoke. That's gonna be an indication that whatever you're using isn't burning efficiently, whether it's your pellets, your chips, or the little chunks like we're using today. So if you do see that, you potentially need some more oxygen in there. You might need to stab some more holes in there or make the holes larger, but you wanna see exactly what we've got here, that clear or thin blue looking smoke. And the other thing you may want to do is put a probe at the grill level, just so you know that the grill level temperature matches what it's showing on your lid. I've tested this barbecue out before and there's only a few degrees difference between what's happening at the grill level and what's happening at the lid when I'm doing a smoking setup. But apart from that, we're just gonna be treating this like a normal reverse sear now. We're gonna be cooking this steak at a low temperature until it reaches about 130 Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Celsius internal. I reckon that's gonna take us about an hour to get there. So we'll come back once we've hit that stage. All right, so our steak's been in for an hour and a half now. I did check it after an hour, but it was still quite a ways off. So let's open up our barbecue and have a look. All right, so we've got some beautiful color on here. Let's check the internal temperature. All right, so as you've seen, we were at about that 120 Fahrenheit or 49-ish degree Celsius internal mark. So once we get to our target temperature, I reckon that'll take another five or 10 minutes. We'll get our steak out, we'll give it a rest, and then we'll set up for a sear. All right, so we're just shy of that 130 Fahrenheit mark we wanna be at. So I'm gonna get our steak out. We'll wrap it up in foil. And that'll probably climb a few more degrees for a couple of minutes, and then we'll give it a rest for another 10 or so. All right, so our steak's having a rest, so in about 10 minutes, I'm gonna get those end hot plates nice and hot. I'll turn those burners onto high, and we'll finish our steak off with a nice hot sear for about a minute each side. So we'll come back soon once we're ready for the sear. All right, so we're ready to sear this steak. Now, I like searing at around 450 to 500 Fahrenheit, or 230 to 260 degrees Celsius. So just to show you guys, we're at about 475-ish around here. So that's where I'm gonna see my steak. Let's get it on. All right, so that's been about a minute. 
absolutely beautiful. have a taste. Mm. You can definitely pick up that smoke flavor. It's really nice. That is a super tasty steak. I usually prefer the flat sear on cast iron anyway because it gives you that nice crust. So obviously there's lots of different ways you can smoke on a gas barbecue. That's just one simple way I do it without any fancy accessories. And if you wanted to do something like pulled pork or a brisket, obviously I'd always recommend doing it in a Weber kettle. But if you only have a gas barbecue, you can follow a similar process, let it smoke obviously for a lot longer, but I'd recommend finishing it off in the oven once you've wrapped it up. We might touch on that in a future video, but for now, that's the end of this video. So if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.